viewer, my name is Antonio Chien from the Moy Forces Academy. You're watching Elimu TV. Welcome to the Science Hub. On my right, Derek Gatti. And on my left, it's Phil Coxway. Together, we are Form 4 students who are going to take you through X-rays being a main topic in the Form 4 syllabus. So, Gatti, tell me, what, what is X-rays? So, X-rays, yeah. simply, it's an electromagnetic radiation that was discovered accidentally by a German scientist who was known as Röntgen while he was conducting research on covered rays. So, thank you very much, Gatti. So, X-rays simply refers to an electromagnetic radiation that was discovered accidentally by a German referred to as Röntgen during, while, do, while conducting his research on cathode rays. Would you kindly allow me to interrupt? Yes, Will Cooks. Why did they decide to use the letter X? Gatti, would you like to expound on that? The, so, why X-rays and not any other? So, X-rays, yes. the letter X. The letter X is because while Röntgen was, was doing his research, at that time, the nature of the rays was unknown. Okay, simply, what Gadget tends to explain is that when, during the time of discovery, its nature was unknown, so it was called X-rays. Have you understood, Wilcox? Yeah, I understood. Okay, production of X-rays. X-rays are produced by X-ray tubes. Simple. X-rays are produced by X-ray tubes and they're produced when electrons traveling at a very high velocity are stopped by a metal target or you can simply say a metal surface. On the board, I have a drawing of the X-ray tube. Nowadays, we have a modern X-ray tube but this was the first X-ray tube, a drawing of it. At the top here, I have a transformer. The purpose of the transformer is to provide the high voltage required for the electric current to run through the heat circuit to the filament. So this is the heat circuit. Its function is to conduct electric current from the high voltage of the step of transformer to the heat to the filament. And the function of the filament is to move or focus electrons to the target. And at the filament, I also have a cathode. A cathode normally negatively charged. So the cathode has a concave, concave shape. The concave shape from just the name focusing cathode is to allow the electrons to be focused from the filament to the target metal, which is tungsten target. This is tungsten target. Get it? Why do we use tungsten target? We use tungsten target because yes. it has a high melting point. Okay, very good. We use tungsten target, that is tungsten, the metal, because it has a very high melting point. Well, folks, yes. apart from this tungsten metal, we can also use, can we also use any other metal? Yeah, you can also use another metal. Which one, please? It's referred to as the molybdenum. Yeah, we can, apart from tungsten, we can use molybdenum. So, in our drawing, we also have, these are the electrodes, in form of electron beam right now, many of them. And in the electron, in our diagram, we also have a vacuum. Therefore, telling us that this X-ray tube has been evacuated. The vacuum, the purpose of the vacuum is to allow heat not to be lost because the heat will be lost due to the collisions between the electrons and the air molecules inside it. So as to avoid any heat loss, we evacuate it. That is, we make it a vacuum. And also, we also have, we had the cathode, now we have the anode. Normally, positively charged. Positively charged. Made of copper. So, Wilcox, any, any of you, Wilcox or Gatti, why is it made of copper? Gatti? So, copper. Yeah. It's called, it's, it's made with copper because copper it's a good conductor of heat. Yeah, very good. Simply. We all know that copper is a very good conductor of heat. So, because we, the, the reason why we use copper is due to the fact that copper is capable or has the ability of dissipating heat. Because for us to have X-rays, we also need to, a lot of production of heat. And in the process, due to production of heat, we have a cooling part, which is filled with oil, and the cooling fins. The function of the cooling fins, just from the name cooling, is for cooling the copper. Isn't it Wilcox? Yeah. What about you, Gatti? Very true. So, 
the cooling part, it has for oil. Oil enters inside while cold and leaves outside while hot. Why is that so? Because it absorbs the heat energy from the copper and it is heated. Oh, very good. Because it absorbs the heat from the copper which has been heated, so it enters while cold and leaves out while hot. Okay, I've discussed everything but apart from this and this. This is the lead shield. This, this opening here, we refer to it as a window. And if, if you can see, my tungsten is not straight, it's hammer tilted. This angle is tilted at an angle of 45 degrees. The reason why it is tilted at an angle of 45 degrees, because if I were to tilt it at any other angle, not 45 degrees, maybe above or below 45 degrees, it would have, it would have resulted to production of a lot of X-rays. And since this error normally occurs, whereby you find that this tungsten has not been tilted at an angle of 45 degrees, a lot of X-ray is normally produced. And that being an error, it had the glass, the glass tube, this one here, which is evacuated, had to be covered by a lead shield. The purpose of the lead shield is to absorb the excess X-rays, which are produced as a result of alternation of the angle with which the tungsten is supposed to be put. So, the function of this shaded part here, the lead shield, is to absorb those excess X-rays. Isn't it, my colleagues? Yeah, it's true. So, uh, I think I'm through with this. And if I may ask, why do we use lead and not any other metal? Lead. Let me take you out of the darkness, gentlemen. We use lead because lead has a very high density and therefore X-rays cannot can penetrate in minimal amount. It can penetrate in minimal amount through this lead shell since it has a very high density. So yes, it can penetrate, but at a very low penetration rate. So therefore, we use lead shield, lead shield because X-ray will penetrate at a very low penetrating rate and therefore a lot of it will end up being absorbed rather than going to the surrounding. So with that, I think I've wrapped up everything and I've explained how X-rays work. So view back there at home from today, it is no longer magic, but it's just the work of physics. The work of physics. Very good. So, so maybe Antonio, yes, I think you can expand more on this. Okay. So you see it here, it yeah. usually has two cycles. There's the first half cycle, there's the reverse half cycle. So in the half cycle, when the anode is positive and the cathode negative, the bombardment will take place where the electrons will come and hit the metal target directly and produce X-rays. But in the reverse half cycle, when the anodes are negative and the cathode are positive, no bombardment of electrons will take place. Therefore, no X-rays are going to be produced. So therefore, what they did, I think they were pretty intelligent, because what they did is that they do this production of X-rays in bursts, which means they only produce X-rays when the anode is at positive and the cathode is negative. So you would be able to realize maybe a stopping, where they stopping, the stopping of production of X-rays. Yeah. Thank you very much, Gatti. From there, we go to the properties of X-rays. Do these X-rays have any properties? Well, Cooks, what is that property of X-rays that you know? Uh, today, I've learned a lot. <laughs> and one property that I've learned is that these X-rays, they cause photoelectric emission. And it can be seen from this the the electrical electrical yeah. yeah. So they cause photoelectric emissions. What about you, Gatti? So as can be seen also on the diagram, the X-rays are coming in a straight line. And this is a vacuum. So this means that the X-rays, they travel in straight lines in a vacuum, which is the speed of light in a vacuum, which is 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Okay, 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second, the speed of light. Yeah. And also, X-rays, they also have another property, which is they are not deflected by magnetic or electric, magnetic or electric fields. And any other property? I think they cause fluorescence in substances such as zinc sulfate. Yeah, they cause fluorescence in substances such as zinc sulfate. We also have that photo. If, I think we are forgetting something that we had just explained earlier. This lead, the function gives us a conclusion that X-rays has another property. That is, it can penetrate through matter, but at a very low penetration, 
through metals that have high density. Therefore, very low penetration through metals that have high density, but the property remains, it can be detached through, through matter. Okay, from there, Gatti will take us through X-rays as a part of electromagnetic spectrum. So simply, X-rays, they are part of the electromagnetic spectrum. As can be seen on the, the, the level which is being drawn by my colleague here. So according to this, when we come down, this means it has a reducing frequency. And then the other one, it's a, an increasing wavelength. So X-rays, they form part of the electromagnetic spectrum because they are here. The X represents X-rays. Yeah. So further on, further on onto the energy of the X-rays, onto the energy of the X-rays, as can be seen, Okay, I think X-ray is that since they have the shortest wavelength, they have the shortest wavelength. They are for making them reducing. So I think it's supposed to be reducing wavelength and exactly. increasing frequency. So you are saying? Yeah. So when you go to that part of um, energy of X-rays, so simply the X-rays they have energy, and the energy, as you know from the physics. Kinetic energy can be formed by what can you find the formula of kinetic half energy squared. Apart from half mv squared, you can use e. which means E V being the electron charge. And then V being the accelerating voltage. Accelerating voltage. So as you also know that X-rays, the energy using Planck's constant, which is H, a constant H, can also be found using HF. F being a frequency. So simply you can derive from here. This one being energy being EV, this one HF, you can derive that EV is the same as HF. But we also know from the topic waves, we are going to discover that uh, um, wavelength, which is uh, velocity of light is equal to frequency times wavelength. So velocity of light in a vacuum, which can be represented as a small c. So this one being c is equal to a small f times a wavelength. So there you can derive this f. You can say that f is equal to c over the lambda. The lambda which is the wavelength. So simply it will give us e is equal to h c over a lambda. So that's simply the energy of X-rays. You use a Planck's constant, you multiply by the velocity of light in a vacuum, then you divide by lambda, which is the wavelength. Yeah, then again, maybe I can give you a sample question. For all the viewers, maybe if you have any written material, you can write down this question. So, the, um, find the frequency and the energy of the X-rays, even that the wavelength is 10 to power negative 10 meters. So you find the frequency and the energy of the X-rays. Given that the wavelength, which is lambda, is given as 10 to the power negative 10 meters. So we don't find the frequency and the energy. So from our formula, you can also derive a wavelength. We have the formula, the velocity of light is equal to frequency times wavelength. You can find, you can find frequency using wavelength, which means frequency is equal to C over lambda. C being a constant, which is the, the velocity of light, in a vacuum is given as 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. And the wavelength will be given is 10 to the power negative 10. So from simple mathematics, I'm able to derive this. You get 3.0 times 10 to the power negative 18 hertz. Hertz is the SI unit of frequency. Yeah. Further on, I'll be told to find the energy. The energy of X is, as I simply said, can be found with the formula energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. So we take Planck's constant, which is also a constant, being given by 6.63 times 10 to the power negative 34, multiplied by frequency, which are found being 3.0 times 10 to the power negative 18. So when you use your calculator, you'll be able to get what number it was. 1.989 times 10 raised to the power negative 1.989 times 10 raised to the power negative 15. 
negative 15 joules. Joules, joules because it's energy. Yeah, that comes to a conclusion of the energy of the X-rays. Then further on, there are two types of rays, which are hard X-rays and soft X-rays. So I know in layman's language, you can think that hard X-rays is formed from a hard substance or maybe soft X-rays from a soft substance. But simply, Wilcox, can you define what hard X-rays are? Uh, the hard X-rays are these are kind of X-rays which are produced by fast-moving electrons. Exactly. So the fast-moving electrons, they give us a high accelerating voltage, which means the high accelerating voltage has a high penetrating power. So the high penetrating power Apart from passing through the tissues, they can penetrate to the bones. So you can be able to find an X-ray of a bone. And then the soft X-rays. Antonio, could you expound on it? Okay, yeah. according to me, soft X-rays refers to X-rays which are produced when electrons are moving at a relatively low velocity. Yeah, exactly too. So when they're moving at a lower velocity, that means they have a low penetrating power. So they only find the X-ray of a tissue. So further on, I'd like to call on to my colleague, Wayne Wilcox. Yeah, <clears throat> so the hard and soft X-rays, they bring us to a conclusion, to a, to a subtopic, which is known as intensity of X-rays. So we can see that the intensity of X-rays, it depends by the heating current. And as you can see here, the electrons are produced from this uh, heating current, current over here. So, <clears throat> so it depends on the heating current. So, and the heating current, depends on the strength of the heater filament and also the strength of this heater, heater filament it results to the release of electrons, isn't it? So if this heating current is strong enough it will emit more electrons, isn't it? Yes. And if it emits more electrons then you can see that more X-rays are produced and the same same heater current if it is strong enough it will produce electrons which move at a very fast speed leading to what you have said as hard X-rays but at the same time if this heater current was not that strong and it produces electrons, it would produce few electrons and electrons which move at a very slow pace. And if they move at a slower pace, they will produce the soft X-rays, which are electrons as a result of slow X-rays. And now, uh, as a result of that, we're going to look at the uses of these X-rays, which were accidentally discovered but they are a solution to life nowadays. So we are going to look at the first field, which is in medicine. So, or in medicine. So in medicine, you can see that these X-rays are used in radiogra radio radiography and radiotherapy. And the first, the first thing is used to, to look at the broken fractures in the body. And we can have uh, Antonio expound more further on the convoluted tube. Okay. Actually, Wilson Wilcox, pardon. It refers to as computed tomography. So. I kind of have a question for you, Gati. Yeah. For example, we know that X-rays are harmful, isn't it? Yes. For example, if I want something to be checked in my vital organs, such as the heart, the skin, the spleen, is it the same computer tomography X-ray that I use? Yeah. So the computed tomography, okay. which is known as also in short form a CT scan, the CT scan it is a special ray equipment which is able to detect the the flaws in tissues such as the spleen and the liver. Okay, thank you very much. So, in short, what Gert tends to say is that you can use the computed tomography X-rays due to its special X-rays without damaging any cells since it has special X-rays. So, Wilcox, you can proceed. So another another effect is in, in industry. The use the use of in industry is used to detect metal flaws, to detect flaws in metal casters and metals. So that's why it's used to. To, to make good use of the broken pipes and the rest. Another use is in crystallography. 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 Yeah, crystallography. So in crystallography, you see that it is used to study the crystal, crystalline structure of metals. And the last use of X-ray, it is used in sec for security purposes. So most of us have gone to airports, and most of us have traveled. Before you travel, uh, your goods are must pass through a secure system and the X-rays is the one which is applied here. So if you have any metallic object, it is detected and hence security is enhanced. So with that, you can anything that has an advantage also has a disadvantage. So the X-rays has some dangers. Okay, Wilcox, before you continue, 
For example, in security in airports, if you go back there, Tom, you can see that when you go to airports, for example, the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, you find that your goods, they move through a, a rolling metal, a rolling piece of metal which has rollers on it, isn't it? Yeah. To be checked. This is simply the work of physics by using X-rays, so as to detect any presence of metals or illegal stuffs. So Wilcox, you are saying that, apart from the, the advantages that it has, it also has dangers. Yeah. Only so oh. when somebody is exposed excessively to these X-rays, you can see that they damage the tissues. And when they damage the tissue, tissues, they lead to tumor, which most of us know that tumor results into cancer. So in short, you can say that these X-rays under excessive exposure are carcinogenic. Isn't it, good? Exactly. So Antoine, maybe you can give more points on dangers of X-rays. Dangers of X-rays, Wilcox has said that it leads to cancer, and I can also say that it leads to damaging of cells, of body cells, and due to the high amount of heat being emitted, it also results to damage of property since the high amount of heat emitted is quite harmful to the property and to also life. So destruction of property and life. So how can we avoid these dangers caused by X-rays? This is simple, by limiting the exposure time to X-rays. Simple. You avoid your body being in contact with X-rays too much. So I would advise you to avoid a lot of having X-rays being done on your body since it will lead to either having cancer or you being a guest of cells being destroyed by X-rays. And I really love physics. Me too. Me three. <laughs> and it is in this ecstatic mood that we come to a sad ending of our discussion today. I being Wilcox Swain, you are artist. And I being your proud mathematician, Derek Gatti. And I'm your physicist, Antonio Ochieng. Stay tuned next time, same place, same time, same television. Remember, keep it Elimu TV.